This is the plaintiff, Kay. She says she rented a room to the defendant who turned out to be a deadbeat. Yep, the guy tricked her into renting to him, then refused to pay the rent. When she finally got him out, he left behind dirty dishes, his disgusting mattress, clothes, and a dresser. She doesn't know who the defendant thinks he's dealing with because she's suing him for $2,819.64, every penny the guy tried to cheat her out of. This is the defendant, Alex. He says the plaintiff is the scammer who tried to unfairly overcharge him for rent and invaded his privacy by entering his room at will without permission, even when he was there. By the line, the judge will soon discover she's nothing but a habitual liar. He owes her not a cent and is confident the judge will see things his way today. He's accused of being a freeloader. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,066.66 for overpayment of rent and security. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant is a deadbeat renter who stiffed her. But the defendant says the plaintiff's a rent gouger. It's the case of gouger. He hardly knew her. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Okay. Kay and Alex. Kay, you're suing Alex, your former roommate, for $2,819.64 that you say he owes you and refuses to pay. You have a counterclaim because according to you, what you did was overpay. All right, let's talk. What happened here? Um, I placed an order, uh, a notice on Craigslist for a roommate. Mm -hmm. uh, I showed him the place. Uh, we agreed on a price. How long ago was that? This was in April. And so the two of you didn't know each other? No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so he moves in when? Uh, Mid-April. And how much were you charging him in rent? Nine seventy-five a month. You don't own the place, right? No. You rent it. Yes, correct. Is it a rent-stabilized apartment? No, it is not. Okay. And how much are you paying in rent? Nine seventy-five total. Right. He and I uh, each paid nine seventy-five, and the other roommate paid four fifty. Okay. And who was the other roommate? His name is Edward. And what is he? Why is he paying so much less? His room was very, very small. Okay. It was not even enough room for him to have a, a bed. He had like a small couch in it. All right. So what ends up happening? He lives there and everything's fine until it's not. When does it become not fine? I, I mean, honestly, he was consistently late on rent. So I wouldn't say it was always fine. Okay. But um, no, uh, in December, uh, I contacted him on the 5th, which is the last day we can pay rent without it being late. And he says uh, he will quite possibly have the money by the week of the 20th. Why, is that accurate? Yes. Why did you tell her I'll have the rent 20 days into the month? Uh, because I was expecting a payment from one of my customers on this day. So di when the 20th of December came, did you pay the rent? No, it was not possible for me because I didn't receive any payment from my customer. Okay, so what is your defense to her lawsuit against you for December rent? Um, I, I never say, like, I don't owe the, the money of the rent of December. But um, I was making some investigation over the building because every time when I talk with neighborhoods, like um, the restaurant owner or the pharmacy girl, they ask me, like, how much are you paying? I say the, the money. They say, it's, it's too high for you. It's too high for the, for the neighborhood. So I was making an investigation that you have in all the proofs. When we meet at the end of December, when I send the email with details point by point. Do you have that email? Yes. Let me see it. Um, were you paying the landlord 2400 every month? Yes. OK. So you send her an email December 23rd. I contacted the lawyer of one of my clients to ask him some general questions and in some way safeguard you from future problems. Great was my surprise. One, apartment has been rent stabilized. According to the website of home and community renewals, residential units at Avenue have rent stabilization. So, um, we've, I, you know, we've, it, it'll be easy enough to figure out whether that's true or not true. You are testifying to me under oath that you have spoken with the landlord and that it's not rent stabilized. Correct. I talked with great length to my landlord through this entire process. Did you actually say to him, is this rent stabilized? Yes. You asked your landlord, he said, no, Point it's blank. not. Yes. Believe me, a landlord will know because it hurts. The, yeah. land, you know, the, the la landlord feels the pain when it's rent stabilized. Right. So the law is, if it's rent stabilized, that you three of you, it doesn't matter who has the big one, three of you have to split it. That way they know nobody's making any, any, any money here. Um, 
So that's what it's going to come down to on the amount of the rent. Now let's talk about you did not. We know you you admit you didn't pay December, right? December and January is there. December and January is what's in play. Yes. And according to you, you got charged a late fee. Yes. Do you ha a late fee that your landlord charged you? Correct. And you paid it. Um, yes. Did you have to pay his rent? Yes. Are you still living there? No. You moved out when? Uh, January 27th. Okay. Can you prove to me the late fee? You say it's $100 per month. Can you prove to me that you paid it? Well, the last month was taken out of my deposit. so I. All right. So let's hold on to the security deposit. Um, and then the last thing that you are suing for is a third of the gas and the electric bill. Um, can I see what you're suing for in the gas yeah, and electric? Yeah, absolutely. And you admit you owe that, right? Because you were supposed to be paying a third of the gas and electric? Um, I have a, a claim about the gas, for example. I never use the kitchen. Never use the kitchen. You've so. got to be kidding me. Uh -huh. No, no, no. Do you think that no. if you agree to pay a third of utilities, that I'm going to sit here and figure it out, figure out like who cooks more? No. Wait, I'm why not, don't you I'm, give I'm me your recipes? That. And then I'll try to determine which has a higher <laughs> boiling point. And then why don't we discuss whether you keep the light on during your shower or take the light off during the game. You think that courts are going to get into You either have to pay a third or you don't. I, we, I don't use the kitchen. Don't be ridiculous. That's not going to matter. All right. Court is in recess while we get to the bottom of the rent stabilization thing. All right. So is rent control fair to landlords? There should be a proper balance for the landlord and the new tenants. Like this, you can ensure to have the same tenants for a longer period of time. Fair enough. Fair enough. You charge whatever you want. It's your property. But the problem is, for landlords, that that's not the case a lot of times. Uh, going inside the courtroom. Okay. Um, now, you have some video that you wanted to show me, correct? Yes. And what is the video of? Um, in, the, in the apartment, each room has not the, the option to lock it from inside or outside. Doesn't have that option? No. Okay. No. So both she and the other roommate go inside my room. And I, for security reasons, I was uh, recording everything. So every time that I left from the room to do anything in the day or in the night, I put my computer recording video and sound in the room just for security reasons. So you caught the two roommates Coming into your room? Yes. Or doing what? All right, let's see your videos. Yes. Did you know about this? Uh, he sent me a screenshot of me standing in his doorway. Oh, not coming in? Where is that? Is that you in a towel? It is. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. What are you guys looking at there? Uh, the filth. Are you an edit thing? No. Oh, you're in a towel. Old, old friends. Okay. All right. Um, what is it you think I was supposed to see from those? Because they couldn't have been more respectful knocking on the door, waiting for an answer, than opening and not crossing your threshold. What was I supposed to see by looking at them? You're not paying rent for December. You don't pay rent for January. You know. Um... Yeah, uh, but the, if, I, if I pay or not, if we have a lease, uh, I have the right on the space, privacy and my space. So if I don't answer when they knock you the door. You don't have to pay rent? No, I want to know how your I'm world works. That. All right. I'm not saying that. Let me tell you a couple things. First of all, the apartment is rent stabilized. Hmm. Interesting. Exactly. Did he say that he told me that? Oh, no. <laughs> I know he didn't tell you that. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So if I were you, I would look into that. And uh, so that's going to be interesting. Drop me a line. Let me know how that goes. Because okay. I think you're a tenacious individual. <laughs> For once, will somebody drop me a line and, and, then, and then say, make sure the judge gets this. Um, so what the rent was was $2,400. What you're entitled to not have to pay is that because it is rent stabilized, it should be divided the three ways. And I realize it's unfair to you because you didn't know all this, but it doesn't matter. I got to go by what the law is. Um, so that comes up with an excess that you have paid of one thousand three hundred and twelve fifty, not the amount that you calculate. All right. If your rent then should be eight hundred a month, and you didn't pay December and January, you owe her sixteen hundred dollars for December and January that she is on the hook for with the landlord. So. Of that one three one two fifty that you overpaid, I am deducting sixteen hundred, and that leaves you with rent that is due in the amount of two eighty seven fifty. You are also counterclaiming 
Five hundred for security deposit. Did he give you five hundred? He did. Okay, which you've kept, right? I, I have not received my deposit back from the apartment yet. All right, we're going to put to aside the security deposits because it's not ripe yet. Because the landlord has X number of days and he still hasn't sent you anything, Correct. right? Okay, we'll put a pin on the on the security deposit issue. And two hundred and forty dollars for internet service for eight months. You paid. You were supposed to pay thirty dollars for internet service, right? For a third of the that we, you guys. We paid. didn't have agreement when we moved in. He decided he wanted to get internet service and would split it with us. So that was it. Was a split. Yeah. It was supposed to be a split. Okay, on his side of the ledger, I'm going to put seven months of a third of seventy dollars and thirty-eight cents, which is hundred and sixty-four dollars and twenty-two cents. So let's recap. What have we got? You're suing him for the rent he didn't pay in December and January. You were correct, and he admits he didn't pay December and January. Because every legal document I find indicates to me that the place is rent controlled, he is right that by law he cannot be charged more than a, an absolute third of the rent. What that means is that he does still owe you money, taking into account the overpayment of all those other rents pursuant to rate, rent stabilization law. He also owes you the gas, and he also owes you the electric, OK? <coughs> which means that he owes you $956.34. Did your landlord charge you any late fees for December and January? Yes. Do you have proof of the late fees? No, because I, I didn't pay those. I didn't pay the last part of those because I was unable to pay because he owed me the money. All right. But I do have the, his... No, no, hold on, hold on. We can do this because what I'm going to do is the late fees will probably be chunked out of the security deposit. And I am separating the security deposit um, it's not ripe at this point because we'll see how much of the security deposit the landlord ends up keeping. So the late fees will be involved in that security deposit. If the landlord keeps money for something that has to do with his room or any damage that he did, that, so that 500 is still out there. Okay, if he doesn't keep anything, then that 500 will go back to you. If he does keep something, then that's going to be your debate for another day in front of somebody else, okay? okay? Because it's too soon for me to tell that. In the meantime, the net result of the lawsuit in front of me is that you owe her $956.34 minus the $164.22 of cable that she owes you, which means you owe her... $792.12 net judgment for the plaintiff in that amount, and the only thing still outstanding between everybody is the security deposit and the late fees. Okay? Thank you. Good luck, folks. So, after a lot of mathematics being performed by the judge, uh, you owe the plaintiff $792. Yeah. You get nothing on your countersuit. You okay with this? I'm okay with that. I mean, it's, it's a lot of complex a, stuff going on. Calm. It's not finished yet, but anyway, it's you do owe her money. Yes. And you didn't pay, so you agree. Absolutely. Okay. All Absolutely. Right. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry about that. Here comes Kay. You know, number one, are you surprised finding out that the stabilization thing? I am surprised. I have many point blank conversations about that with my roommate and my landlord. I mean, I, that's one thing. The other thing is, you didn't get internet until he moved in, right? How could you live without the internet? <laughs> I have an unlimited plan on my phone. On your phone. You didn't need the internet. No. Okay, all right, very good. Well, look, you okay with this? Oh, 700 bucks? I mean, this is really, you, she's you made her work. She's a very wise woman, and she sh it proves that more women should be in charge. <laughs> She'll love you saying that. Thank you very much. Okay, you. you must sign a few documents. <laughs> Harvey? You know, you should go online and find out what the deal is in your city, if there is a rent stabilization law, and if there is, what the penalty is if the landlord really does try and overcharge you.